Hello everyone and welcome to your first week of Greek for Ministry. Uh, welcome and I just wanted to take this time to run through the first lecture. If you're more of a reader, you can read through this lecture. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to give you much more than what's already there, but for those of you who just really need the verbal and visual to go along with it, uh, hopefully this will provide an avenue for you to absorb the material a little bit more easily. I'm going to be providing both avenues for you every week this semester. So the first thing we need to do in this class is start thinking about English grammar because what I need to to make sure of is that all of you students understand the basic pieces of English grammar that we're going to be referencing as we're interpreting the Greek language uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. So for some of you, this may be a lot of rehash. You may feel like you're back in elementary school, maybe middle school, maybe even high school for some of you. Um, but this hopefully will feel more like review. And in some cases, it'll probably be a little bit bit more nuanced than you had ever received before. So what we're going to start with is just going over the basic parts of speech, nouns, adjectives, and verbs, just as a way to build the groundwork so that when we jump into the Greek, you'll be a little bit more agile. So to begin, we're going to talk about nouns. As we all know, uh, or as we've heard often, a noun is a person, place, or thing. It's a little more nuanced than that, but just as some basic examples, Jesus, apostle, Jerusalem, book, dog, boat, uh, these are all different nouns, uh, and they, they can serve in a variety of functions within a sentence, in other words, in English syntax. Uh, the other way that nouns can appear is as pronouns. These tend to be generic ways that we refer back to a previously stated noun. Uh, and these are things like he, she, it, her, I, me, they, them, or you. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. So they tend to get paired up with them or we use certain kinds of verbs to pair them with a noun. For example, the pie was good or the red car is fast. Uh, in the second instance, both red and fast being adjectives functioning in slightly different ways, which we'll go over uh, in a bit. Verbs, uh, as you all I'm sure know, are uh, action words. These are words that we use to describe what a subject, what a noun is doing. Uh, so you have there, Jim runs, we see, go to the door. Uh, these are all action words. I'm going to go over briefly a few other parts of speech, but we'll actually push the nuances for those into next week. Um, and those are prepositions. Um, these are words that uh, link together substantives, uh, like nouns, uh, to another word, either positionally or conceptually. Um, and I give you some examples there. Once again, we'll go over the nuance uh, next week. Adverbs, which modify verbs and tend to end in ly silently, quickly, uh, and so on. Conjunctions, which join words together, and, or, but, and many others, for. And then interjections uh, that stand alone in sentences and are just inserted and are grammatically unrelated to the rest of the sentence. Oh, New Testament Greek doesn't sound anything like modern Greek. I'm sure you all already know that. Uh, so let's jump into uh, the functions of nouns. So as we know, a noun, generally speaking, is a person, place, or thing, uh, but they can function in different ways in a given sentence. The first of those being the subject. Uh, the subject means that it's functioning as the one who is performing the action of the verb in the sentence. The apostle sends the prophet. In that sentence, apostle is the subject because it is the one who is enacting the sending, the verb. The other way a noun can function is as a direct object. That is the thing that receives the action of a verb. So given the example that I just stated, the apostle sends the prophet 
profit in this case would be the direct object, the, the, the noun that is receiving the action of the sending, the verb. The third way a noun can function is as an indirect object. So in this example, um, I'm going to expand that sentence we've been working with, the apostle sends the prophet, to now include the apostle sends the prophet to the king. They are the, the, the king in this sen instance is the indirect object because it is not receiving the, the action of the verb. It is indirectly receiving it. Where is the prophet being sent? To the king. So the king is being affected by the sending, but not directly. In other words, the king isn't being sent. He's receiving uh, the one who was sent, namely the prophet. That one can be a little bit tricky, but the way we often denote it in English is by using the preposition to. And then the final way that we're going to go over uh, for this particular lesson is showing possession. So uh, we do this in English in a variety of ways, uh, but the most prominent way is by putting an apostrophe S after a noun. So the apostles Lord sends the prophet. Uh, in this case, apostles is a possessive noun because it it is the noun that possesses the Lord. Uh, so whose Lord is it? It's the apostles' Lord. Um, other examples might be it's Derek's computer. Uh, this is a way that we show possession with nouns. And I introduce all these to you because they're going to have direct Greek counterparts when we get into week three. So it'll help you to think in these categories uh, before we move into actually the Greek grammar that we're going to be dealing with uh, throughout the semester. Now let's move on to adjectives. So adjectives can function in three different ways uh, in English. Uh, the first of those and the most common being the attributive function. So an attributive adjective is something that directly modifies a noun and is paired with it. For example, Jesus is the mighty king. Um, in this case, mighty is modifying or describing the noun king and therefore is functioning as an, attri an attributive adjective, an, uh, an attribute of the king. The second way that uh, an adjective can function in English is as predicate. This is when an adjective doesn't isn't directly tied to a noun right next to it, but rather is attributed to a noun with the verb to be conjugated appropriately. For example, King Jesus is mighty. So one could say mighty King Jesus. That would be attributive. But here, we want it to be a complete sentence. Mighty King Jesus is a fragment. So you can put it as the predicate and attribute it to the person with a to be verb. Then it becomes a predicate use of an adjective. King Jesus is mighty. And then finally, substantive. Uh, now, this is a little bit more streamlined in the Greek language, but in English, we have to add a generic noun to this uh, to this standalone adjective like one. Um, and so in the example I give here, Jesus is the king, comma, the mighty one. Mighty one is functioning as a substantive adjective. That is to say, it's modifying the word one, but one isn't a, isn't substantive in and of itself. It's a tag along. Um, so in Greek, this will be a little bit easier to see because it'll just be one uh, word that's an adjective that you need to add an English word for it to make sense, like one. Um, but this is an example in English of a substantive adjective an adjective that's given its own substance so it feels like a noun. All right, now let's jump into verbs. And this is probably the place where you all will get a little bit uh, stir crazy, um, primarily because there are a lot of different kind, uh, different uh, tenses of verbs in English that we do use on occasion, but we don't often think about them and categorize them. Uh, so they can get a little bit tricky, but I've listed them out here for you. There are 12 different tenses. Uh, and we're going to work with them in sets of three. And they're always going to be some form of present, past, future 
and then some modifier to go along with it. The first set of three is simple. Simple present, simple past, simple future. I jump, I jumped, I will jump. Or other examples might be, he jumps, uh, she jumped, they will jump. Uh, those are simple present, simple past, simple future, respectively. Then we move on to the continuous category. Present continuous, past continuous, and future continuous. I am jumping. That's, that is to say I'm in the act of doing it right now. I was jumping. I will be jumping. In, in any instance, this, uh, this nuance or this tense gives you the idea that whenever it was happening uh, in the present, past, or future, it was doing so over a period of time. The perfect present perfect, past perfect, future perfect. I have jumped, I had jumped, I will have jumped. So uh, in, in each of these instances, you add the, the verb have, either in its present, past, or future form, have, had, will have, um, and then modify it with the past tense form of the verb that you're conjugating. I have jumped, I had jumped, I will have jumped. And then the final set of three are the, is the present perfect continuous, the past perfect continuous, and the future perfect continuous. And these are everyone's favorites. Uh, I have been jumping, I had been jumping, I will have been jumping. Now you may think, when would I ever use that? Uh, well, when someone says to you, hey, if I call you in 15 minutes, uh, is that all right? Well, by then I will have been uh, to the grocery store and back, so that should be fine. You're thinking ahead to what will be past tense when the person has asked you to think about what, from that time frame. <laughs> it's very confusing, but we do actually use it. Um, I hear it quite often. When you listen for it, you hear it. So this is the end of the lecture and what you're going to be doing with this information is engaging in the homework assignment that's posted right under this video in Moodle and what that homework assignment is going to do is present a few biblical texts to you and ask you in some way to interact with the nouns adjectives and verbs and analyze them with this information in mind to show me and to show your peers how you're interpreting and understanding the English language that you're reading in your Bibles. So uh, have fun with that. Once again, uh, if you remember from the orientation, I don't grade on correctness of answers for the homework. So f this is a free space to fail and throw it out there and work with your peers to try to get what you think might be the right answer um, and I'll kind of poke my head in here and there to make sure you all are on the right track. So have some fun with this, uh, see how you do, and we will talk about it in a few days on the Moodle forums.